بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم را تلك آيات الكتاب والذي أنزل إليك من ربك الحق ولكن أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون الله الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها ثم استوى على العرش وسخر الشمس والقمر كل يجري لأجل مسمى يدبر الأمر يفصل الآيات لقوم لعلكم بلقاء ربكم توقنون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الوقتة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay folks, uh, we're starting Surah Al-Ra'ad Surah Al-Ra'ad, uh, of course Ra'ad means what? Thunder Thunder So you should already appreciate that this surah is going to have warning in it Like thunder does Right? And it's um, actually the way even the surah starts off It's a continuation of what we just concluded with in Surah Yusuf. So if you go to the end of Surah Yusuf, we see مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى It's not speech that's been made up. وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقًا الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ However, it's a confirmation of what is right before him. It's a description of the Qur'an. That's what, the, what Surah Yusuf ends with. Surah Ra'ad begins. أَلِفْ لَامْ رَأْ تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ It continues that conversation. Now that you know it's not made up, well, what is it? And how is it guidance? So it, it continues that, carries that conversation forward. Uh, this surah, the sections of it, the, basically how the argument is laid out, it's 43 ayat, <coughs> and they're small, small sections, small, small mini arguments. The first ayah is an argument by itself. It's the, it's the stable nature of, of <laughs> revelation and the authentic source of revelation uh, contrasted with the stubborn nature of the kuffar. As awesome as this revelation is, most of them are not going to come to accept. The second to the fourth ayah, Allah describes the kingdom of the skies. Well, where did this revelation come from? This is Allah, you know, wants the kingdom or the rule of Allah to be established on the earth, but the rule of Allah is already established in the skies from which the revelation came. That's the second to the fourth ayah. Then they find it very strange. And if you think this is strange, then what they're saying is even more stranger. But their, their, their words are then strange. And we'll, we'll talk about that in ta'jab fa'ajabun qawluhum when we get to that ayah. But Allah Azza wa Jal expresses, you don't have a right to be weirded out by this religion. It is Allah that has a right to find it strange that you're not accepting it. And you don't realize the price of that kind of kufr. When you go from ayahs number 7 all the way to 11, they're going back to their same mantra, which is, show us something. And this time Allah gives a response. In his response, instead of giving that, that standard response, in addition is, I know what you're up to. Show us when the punishment is coming, and basically Allah's response is, I know what you're up to. <clears throat> 12 to 13, there's, if you really want to see something, here's a small taste of Allah's power, thunder. What happens in the sky, thunder and, thunder and lightning. 14 to 16, now that you realize Allah's power, you know what any religion, what people do? They raise their hands up to the sky and they pray. That's what they do in any, any form of worship. So he says, calling to any other than Allah is an act in vain. When he realized now he controls everything down to thunder, there's no point in you asking anybody else. And he talks about the futility of making dua to anybody else. Then Allah talks in the, in the 17th ayah, he actually talks about he use, using the thunder and the lightning. Now obviously what's the next part in thunder and lightning? Rain. And Allah uses rain, the example of rain, to talk about a process in creation that Allah has. And that is of, Allah has certain mechanisms in the universe, in our case the rain, by which He cleans out filth. It's a cleansing process. So a rain will come and clean out a valley. And He says this is part of the sunnah of Allah in creation. The point of which is, if you know that Allah he, you know, wipes out filth, well, what do you think you are, <laughs> if you don't believe? So, in the لَبِيبَ مِنَ الْإِشَارَةِ يَفْهَمْ Right through creation, the, the, the kuffar are being told, look, this is what Allah does with filth, with scum. It's a very powerful example in the Qur'an, actually. It's one of my favorite parallels, or parables in the Qur'an. Then the 18th to the 25th ayah, now that you know what's coming, meaning Allah has already alluded to the fact that filth will be removed, 
And congratulations to those who believe. And may the disbelievers be cursed. It's basically this almost like uh, what's uh, the inevitable. But disbelievers, when they hear that believers are being congratulated, they say, why are believers being congratulated? How come if they're so congratulated, how come we're enjoying blessings in this world? How come we get to have a good life? Ayah number 26 by itself addresses that issue, that response from the kuffar. So it's like a dialogue, a, de a debate. The 27th, uh, the 27th to the 32nd ayah, five, these five, six ayat, they again ask for a miracle, and Allah says, instead of keep, you keep asking for a miracle, why don't you ponder upon Allah's names, and re re reflect upon Allah's qualities and attributes. And if they don't want to do that, then leave them alone, let them continue to make fun of this religion. Allah Azza wa turns around then in response, obviously if you don't reflect on Allah's name, you have names, you have no uh, consideration for Tawheed. In the 33rd to the 35th ayat, basically Allah Azza wa tells them their shirk has no value, has no truth to it. No one's going to come to help them in the end. Then this is a conversation with the mushrikun, but this revelation, why don't you be like those who you consider more educated than you? Even though Quraysh considered the people of the book more educated than them. Allah says, a group of the people of the book, when they heard about this revelation, they are overjoyed. They are so happy the promise of Allah was fulfilled in their lifetime. There's a group among them like that. And then there's another group who are losers just like you, who because of the deviations and the crookedness they've introduced into their religion, they've become, they've become enemies of this truth just like you have. And the messengers being warned, don't be swayed by them. Because they'll seem educated in the book, but they have their own agenda. Then the concluding remarks are given to the messenger, the 38th to the 43rd ayah. And basically, are you're a messenger like previous messengers. They were sent before on a mission, you've been sent on a mission. And if they're asking you for a sign, don't you worry, I am showing them something little by little. And actually, there's a very interesting twist that this surah enjoys, a, a new kind of uh, argument that this surah enjoys, that we'll talk about when we get to it. That Allah says, we're actually, we are in the process of showing them little by little by little. And the parallel to what Allah is showing them is directly with thunder. It has something to do with thunder, and that's the name of the surah too. So we'll discover that when we get to the end. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. Tilka ayatul kitab. Those are the miraculous signs of the book. وَالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقِّ and whatever has been, what, what has been sent down to you from your master is in fact the truth. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يؤمنون. However, most people, they're not going to believe. Already from the very beginning, أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يؤمنون. So it's already going to take a, a tough tone. اللَّهُ الَّذِي رَفَعَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا Allah is the one who raised the skies without any pillars that you can see. Sometimes Allah says, رَفَعَ السَّمَاوَاتِ Sometimes He says, رَفَعَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ he adds this quality, بِغَيْرِ Ahmad. Well, what's the benefit of adding it sometimes and not adding it sometimes? This particular case, one of the main benefits of adding it is, revelation was just talked about. And revelation comes from where? The sky. And so the elevation of the sky, and how high it is, and how it stands without support, its, its grandness is being described for you to understand how great revelation itself is. The road revelation takes to come to you, the road itself is incredible and doesn't have any beams being, holding it up. تَرَوْنَهَا ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Then he rose upon Al-Arsh, the, the throne. وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ Tasheer, I don't know if I've told you about before, but Tasheer is to subdue something and put it to work. Like we do Tasheer of animals. We domesticate them and put them to work. You know, and we, we they do what we, we tell them to do. Allah subdued and put the sun and the moon to work. كُلٌّ يَجْرِي لِأَجْلٍ مُسَمَّى Everything is moving flowing until a given time. Allah here gives us a description of basically the universe as He created it. The skies and the earth, the sun and the moon, everything is moving. And of course, we know that in nature, every, nothing is still. Everything's moving. Inside every single cell, or inside every even single atom, there are some par atomic particles that are moving. <coughs> Life and actually the universe is in a constant state of motion. It's constantly moving. And so Allah says, this motion is happening until a given time. Then one day, it's going to be, the, the trumpet will be blown into and everything will become still. But until then, things are going to remain in motion. You, and also, motion implies change. So everything is moving and altering and transforming until a given time. يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ 
He plans out the decision. So all these changes and all the steps in this change are all planned by Allah Azza wa Jal. يُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ بِلِقَاءِ رَبِّكُمْ تُوقِنُونَ He clarifies the ayat so you would become completely convinced, especially of meeting with your master. In other words, if changes are happening, happening constantly in you, well, one change that's constantly happening in us is a progression towards death. And so if you realize everything in the universe is changing, including myself, then you should realize just like, you know, uh, I have a, an end and I'm going to meet Allah, the entire universe itself has an end. We have to be convinced of meeting with Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's the motion of the universe that itself that is being called on as a proof. وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَدَّ الْأَرْضَ And He's the one who stretched the earth out. وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا And He pe- placed in it pegged ones. رَوَاسِيَا from رَاسِيَا uh, رَوَاسِي the ones that are pegged. Like it's one of the words for mountains. When the, par- when the larger part of the mountain is under the earth and the smaller part of the mountain is above the earth then they're called رَوَاسِي. وَأَنْهَارًا and, and rivers. Of course, the, the, the imagery now is land, mount, mountains, and then rivers flowing through. This imagery will repeat itself later. So you have to pay attention to how Allah is depicting images in the surah, because it will tie together later on. وَمِن كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ And from all kinds of food. Of course, if you have a, a land, then there's, it's irrigated, and it's protected by the elements, by mountains surrounding it. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of vegetation. There's going to be a lot of fruit. Interestingly enough, Mecca doesn't enjoy that. It's surrounded by mountains. Two, it has a water supply. What's that? Zamzam. It's got a land, but it doesn't have fruits coming to it from that land. Fruits come to it from everywhere else. People bring all kinds of fruit to it. Rihal tashitai was saif, right? Warzukhum min thamarat. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked that they, sh- they should be provided with all kinds of fruits. So they are. Anyhow, so this, this even when Allah says Allah stretched the land out, what land seems more stretched than the desert? Right? So when Allah is giving this example in general, the Meccans can very easily visualize this talking about them. <laughs> he placed it in two pairs. Every fruit has two kinds of variations. Sometimes some ulama said this means, you know, the, the, the female species of plants and male species, and some plants have the male and female within the, the, the plant itself. Others talked about, you know, fruit, uh, fruits having different kinds of flavors or the same tree and you pick the fruit and one of them is tasty and the other is not tasty and things like that. Zawjain ithnayn. Yughshil layl al-nahar. And by the way, something I should have mentioned in my introduction to this surah, this surah is full of contrast. There's one thing from a style point of view, one thing you'll notice in this surah is contrast, contrast, contrast. Night with day, sky with earth, believer with disbeliever. Fruits, also two kinds. He covers night with day, mountains and land, flat land, you know. You're going to keep seeing contrast here. Yuqshi layl al nahar He covers the night. Or he, uh, he covers the, 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 the day with the night, night with the day. You can actually re- understand that both ways. Inna fi dhalika la ayatin li qawmin yatafakkaroon. In all of that, there are m- multiple signs for people that want to put the effort of thinking. They want to engage themselves deeply in thought. Wa fil ardi. And especially in the land. Qit'un mutajawiratun. Stocks or you know uh, barks of trees that are right next to each other. Tajawara ya tajawaru actually means to be neighbors to one another. Mutajawirat they're right next to one another, lying next to each other. Sometimes on the road you'll see trees that are just literally like an army in rows, even though they weren't naturally or, or they weren't artificially planted that way. They just form these rows upon rows upon rows of trees. So qit'un mutajawirat wa jannatun min a'nabin wa zarun wa nakhilun and gardens of of grapes and then all kinds of crop وَزَرْعُنْ وَنَخِيلٌ Palm trees سِنْوَانٌ وَغَيْرُ سِنْوَانٌ This is a new word for you أَصْنَ النَّخْلُ أَصْنَ يُسْنِ إِسْنَاءً أَصْنَ النَّخْلُ For a date palm to become, to become firm and to stand on a single, single stem meaning the bark is one and it's not branching off too much سِنْوَانٌ means it's combined also some say سِنْوَان means it's made up of many branches غَيْرُ سِنْوَان It doesn't have further branches it's just one thick stalk it's one thick bark so different manner of trees. Yusqa bima in wahid. So different kinds of trees are being furnished with the same water. This is actually, again, Allah pondering for those who reflect, who think deeply, right? Now thinking deeply doesn't just mean you're thinking about water coming and it's feeding plants and palm trees and farms and grapevines and you know plants that are next to each other. Water, as you will learn in this surah particularly, among other surahs, is actually a parallel for revelation itself. Water is pure and purifies everything else. Ma is tahir and tahur, right? 
it, it's pure and it purifies. What is revelation? It is pure and it purifies. Water comes from the sky and it gives life to the earth. Revelation comes from the sky and gives life to the earth. Water comes, different kinds of plants benefit. Revelation comes, different kind of people benefit. And sometimes the, 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 the same tree, it's drinking the same water from its roots, and it's supplying the same nutrients to all of its fruits, but some fruits come out good and some fruits come out bad. Same household, same revelation, same message. One uncle believes, one uncle disbelieves. Right? So these are parallels for people. It's very beautifully depicted. For people who want to give themselves thought, who want to think about these things. So next time you're looking at the variation of plants in a garden, you're thinking about the variations of people and their personalities. And how different people respond to the same message. يُسْقَى بِمَاءٍ وَاحِدٍ They're given to drink the same water. وَنُفَضِّلُ بَعْضَهَا عَلَى بَعْدٍ And we give preference some over others. Some plants we feed better than others. And you notice how some plants actually become a source of life for other plants. Some, like the trees, they grow and their shade grows. And in their shade, certain plants are able to survive that wouldn't be able to take the intensity of the sun. But they're able to survive because of that. Messengers are like that. Right? They take all the heat and they provide all the shade. SubhanAllah. <laughs> and they have the deepest roots. So we give preference some over others. Fil ukul in the in the taste, in the in, in the texture of food. In nafidalika la ayat in liqaumin yaqilun. In all of that there are many miraculous signs for people who apply their intellect, who give themselves, who give thought. Wa in ta'jab, and if you're in shock, in other words, if you're in shock, they don't believe. If ta'jab is referring to the Prophet. If you're in shock, then you know, you shouldn't be in shock that they don't believe. The real thing to be, it's understandable that you're in shock actually, because what they are saying is in fact weird. فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ So if you are shocked, it's because what they say is weird. Others have understood, understood in ta'jab as the kafir is being referred to. In ta'jab, if you, disbelievers, are in shock, then their words are shocking. فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ Now that sounds a little strange because then فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُكُمْ أو فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُكَ If you're in shock, well, your, your language itself is shocking. But it's going from second person to third person, which makes Allah me more convinced that ta'jab is referring to the Messenger, والسلام, and he's shocked at their attitude. And Allah is saying, well, you know what, if you're shocked, it's normal for you to be, because what they're saying is strange. فَعَجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ When we're going to be in the dirt, we're going to be brought out a new creation. It is strange they're saying that. Didn't they just hear me explain how I bring plants out of the earth? How are they shocked that life will come out of dirt? How are they shocked at that? That's weird that they can't even think that much. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ Those are the ones that have disbelieved in their master. وَأُولَٰئِكَ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ They're the ones that are going to have chains. Next surah will also talk about chains. But the word for chains in the next surah will be asfad. مُقَرَّنِينَ بِالْأَصْفَادِ At the end of Surah Ibrahim. Here we're seeing it in the beginning. الْأَغْلَال أَغْلَال are actually chains that tie multiple things together. Like if you have hands, chain, chain. That's handcuffs. That's also a form of أَغْلَال. Okay. These are chains in their necks. Well, I mean, we don't have multiple necks, do we? So then how is it أَغْلَال أَغْلَال فِي عَنَاقِهِمْ You're chained. Like there's this thing around your neck. And the chain goes to the next criminal. And it's around his neck. And it goes to the next criminal, and it's around his neck. That's aghlal. They're all chained together. So one is pulled, they're all yanked. They're all yanked. And we learn, actually, in some descriptions of Judgment Day, who are you chained to? You're chained to the people that you help misguide. That were partners in crime with you. You're also chained to the people that are from your family that you didn't, that you didn't do anything to help. That you didn't take responsibility for. That you didn't make any da'wah to, and they just did what they did, and you didn't care. You know? How many of us have families that are far away from the deen? Probably all of us. Of some family that's far away from deen. And we just don't bother because it's too uncomfortable talking to them. Like it or not, Allah chained us to, to them and them to us. On judgment day, that will become very clear. So whether, you, whether we want to have those uncomfortable conversations or not, it's not even a question of uh, you know, if, it's a question of when. When and how, that's the only question. But the, the, the fact that we have to deal with those cousins, those uncles, that family... We have to. But this is, for, you know, in a different context, referring to the disbelievers, and they're put chains around their neck. May Allah Azza wa not make us of them. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Those are the people of fire in which they will remain. And you know, adding to that, that, that graphic description, is that they have metal around their neck, and they're in a fire. So what's also burning? The metal itself. Burning metal is around their neck. 
وَيَسْتَعْجِلُونَكَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ And they're rushing you to show the evil, the wrong, the, the harm, meaning the, the punishment. قَبَلْ hasana Before the good. In other words, they are not asking for the goods from Allah Azza wa Jal to come. And before the good would come, they're just asking for the, the crime because they're, that's what they've become. Just show us the punishment, we're ready for it. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمُ الْمَثُلَاثِ From much before, مَثُلَاثِ have appeared. Mathulath is plural of Muthla. Muthlatun. Okay? And Mathulath actually comes from Mithal. You know what Mithal, what does it mean? Example. Mathulath is actually a form of punishment that becomes exemplary. Like teacher hangs somebody upside down and says, let that be an example to you. That's Muthla. Okay? It becomes a deterring example for others. Mathula as a verb. Mathula yamthulu actually also means of an image to come in the mind. Of an image to appear in the mind. So when you say mathulath, you're talking about a punishment that when it's being described, it comes in your mind, the pictures come in your mind. When Allah says from much before mathulath have been given to them, it means these people, when you say, when you say mention, you know, Ad and Thamud and whatever, the, the ruins of those nations, just a slideshow appears in their brain. And they can visualize, you know, all, all of these previous uh, nations and their destruction. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو مَغْفِرَةٍ للناس. And your master is the possessor of great forgiveness for people. In other words, I haven't, cl- I haven't closed the doors. You're the people that keep asking for punishment. I'm still offering you forgiveness. عَلَى ظُلْمِهِمْ Despite their wrongdoing. And by the way, Allah not showing something in and of itself is a form of forgiveness. We talked about that before. They keep asking for things to see. When you see things, when the angels show up, what did we learn in Surah Yunus? Once they show up, it's, it's done, it's finished. Learn from the example of your own father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right? So, despite their wrongdoing, Allah keeps forgiving. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَشَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ But don't, be, don't confuse Allah's forgiveness with His lack of taking revenge or, or delivering intense outcomes. Your master is intense in dishing out consequences, punishments, عِقَابِ Al-Itabu, that's what this is, Al-Itabu qabla al-Iqab. This is Al-Itab. Allah is saying, I'm not giving you Iqab yet. That's my formula. وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ Those who disbelieve, they still say, and they keep saying, How come no miracle comes to him from his master? إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرْ You're just a warner. In other words, don't bring me that request back. Yeah, Allah, give him something. No, your job is just to warn. You keep doing, you, I've, been, I've given you enough. وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had And every nation has a guide. Hadin is actually marfu'ah. Hadin, hadiyan. Hadin, right? لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٍ So this is actually فِي مَحَلْ رَفَعْ Now, what does it mean every nation has a guide? Obviously every nation has a prophet, but why refer to that here? What is that doing in this ayah here? The disbelievers say, how come no miracle comes? You're just a warner and every nation has a guide. Every nation has a guide doesn't just mean a messenger. The Qur'an is also a guide, yes? إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي فَالْقُرْآنُ هَادٍ Allah is saying every nation has its own form of guidance. Quran is our form of guidance. Every nation gets its own form of guidance. Some nations received miracles to see. Others, other nations received you know, miracles to hear. Like, you, like yours, you're receiving the book. Allah decides what nation gets what. <clears throat> that distribution of resources, of divine resources, is up to Allah, not up to you. Your only job, just keep warning. By the way, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرٌ wa Bashirun? No Bashir here. Why not? The entire surah is thunderous. When you hear thunder, you don't hear good news. What do you hear? Bad news. Oh, kids lose their sleep. They come and take over your bed. Right? That's what happens when you hear thunder. Allahu ya'lamu ma tahmilu kullu untha. Oh, and you don't think I'm going to... You're asking for punishment, and you don't think uh, I know what you're up to? I know about you before you knew about yourself. Allah knows what every female is carrying. She doesn't even know she's carrying yet. She's going about her day, she doesn't even know she's expecting a baby. And not just a, a, a human, every female. 
وَمَا تَغِيضُ الْأَرْحَامِ And what the wombs suck in, what they take in. You know, it's, it's like a seed being planted, it's taken in. غَضَ يَغِيضُ also means of something to be absorbed. We read this before. وَغِيضَ الْمَا And the water was absorbed, was taken in. So the womb takes it in. وَمَا تَزْدَادُ And whatever the wombs, when, when the wombs start getting bigger, when they start increasing. وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِمِقْدَارٍ And everything with him is in a calculation. It's by, it goes by a precise measure. You think you're getting away with anything you're doing? You're doubtful? I keep calculation of what you were doing inside the belly of your mother. When, you, when the womb of your mother contracted, and when it started getting bigger and bigger. You think I don't have control over you? عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ shahada, The knower of the unseen and the seen. Al-Kabir, the great. You know, Al-Kabir is contrast. How small you were inside your mother. Contrast. And then Al-Muta'al, the possessor of the greatest heights. Al-Muta'al. You are low. Allah Azza wa Jal high. From the, that's another thing that you'll notice here. Elevation is talked about a lot. Mountains from the very beginning, the highest skies without any pillars. Rafa'a, elevated. Allah Himself, the possessor of all heights. We say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala, the ism fa'il would be. Ta'ala ya ta'ala, ta'aliyan fahuwa. Muta'alin. That's why you see al-kabiru al-muta'ali. It's not majroor. Fi mahal rafa'a. Salaam minkum. It will be the same among you. Man nasarra al qawla wa man jahara bihi. Whoever was hiding some speech and whoever was exposing his speech. Wa man huwa mustaghfim bil layli. And who's hiding out and trying to hide out in the night. Wa saribun bil nahari. And he's going into any. Sarab actually means to flow or move. Sarb also means the animal hole. So he's trying to hide out even in the day, it could refer to. Wa saribun bil nahar. لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ So he knows where you are. Night or day, there's no hiding from you, from him. And nothing you say is going unnoticed. But then he says, how come he hasn't punished you yet? لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ عَقَّبَ in Arabic to someone, to follow someone closely. You know, we read towards the end of Quran, we read, فَلَقْتَ حَمَلْ عَقَبَ وَمَا أَدْرَكَ مَلْ عَقَبَ عَقَبَ A very high mountain. That's hard to climb. عَقَبَ or أَعْقَبَ also to follow someone through, even if they're climbing a mountain, you're just, you're keeping up. No matter how you try to hide, there's aqaba. You know, of course, you guys don't watch any movies except some I heard. Um, car chases. Guy takes a left, he takes a right, he goes between two cars, he goes on the other side of the highway, he goes into the river, whatever. And the other guy's not letting go. This is ta'qib. He's not letting go. Allah says, Allah has sent before you a small army of angels that are called mu'aqibat. Guardian angels, if you want to call them. We've, we've heard about them before. Yusilu alaykum hafadan. We read this before. Now Allah calls them a small band. How do we know they're a small band? See the alif ta, mu'aqibatun. That's in a reference to jama' taksir. Or it's a jama' qilla actually. Jama' qilla. It's a minimal plural. So a small band of angels for each human being has been assigned. And their job is don't let this guy die before time comes. So, you know, you're driving and your brakes are supposed to fail. They won't let it fail because it's not your time yet. You keep going. You know, Shaykh Umar Sulaiman, one day when he comes here, I'll drag him here. Ask him to tell you the story about when his brakes failed on the highway. 80 miles an hour. Going from Louisiana to Houston. Brakes failed. It's crazy. He did like two 360s in the grass in between the two highways. Came to a completely perfect stop. Untouched, unharmed. Yeah. Yeah. And what else is cooler? Saw it in a dream a couple of days before. Didn't ask what it means. Because he usually asks what his dreams mean. Yeah, he saw in a dream that he was, he was sitting with some really awesome scholars from the past. I won't tell you their names, I'll let him tell you. And he was serving them tea. And he spilled the tea a little. He forgot all about the dream. A week after this near-death accident, he was talking to his, one of his teachers, Sheikh Raja, and he asked him, I saw this dream, by the way. He's pouring tea. He goes, it's very good news. Just, Allah will give you a very strong reminder of death soon, though. He didn't tell him that the dream is, it's already happened. And he's like... Mu'aqibat. <laughs> Angels are there. They're going to take care of business. Min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfi. They're going to be in front of him and behind him. And this is, could some say this is even referring to the messenger. He doesn't need, he doesn't have to fear you. He's got a security detail. Some standing in front, some standing in behind him. And they're guarding him by Allah's command. 
He doesn't have to worry about your protection or your, your dangers. In Allah لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Now that the Messenger you don't have to worry about, he's safe, you should worry about yourselves. Allah will not change your state. In other words, punishment for you is inevitable. Until a nation changes what is afflicting themselves. مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا And when Allah intends harm to come to any nation, any group of people, فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ Then there is no turning back, no, no cancelling it. This is actually a Masdar Mimi for Rad. Ridda wa Marad. Wa ma lahum min dunihi min wal. And besides him, you're not going to find any protector whatsoever. Wal is the ism fa'il of Wali. Wali is more constant. Wal is the ism fa'il, so it's immediate, right now. You're not going to find even standing up at the moment to try and protect you. Huwa alladhi yurikum al barqa khawfan wa tama'an. He's the one who shows you lightning. And in the lightning, there is fear and there is hope. Hope, because if you see, if there's the land was dry and you heard a, saw a little bit of lightning, what are you hoping? Rain. In Surah Al-Baqarah, we read another parable. Guy is lost, completely lost. He sees the lightning and he sees where to go. So it, it, it becomes a source of hope for him. وَيُنْشِئُ السَّحَابَ thiqal, And he elevates, he raises <coughs> really heavy mountains. Really heavy mountains. Now why even mention the, the weight of the mountains? First of all, light mountains don't carry lightning in them. Or light, keep saying mountains, clouds. Light clouds don't carry lightning in them. Heavy clouds do. Heavy clouds also, when they clash with each other, what, what else do they produce? Thunder. And heavy clouds are the ones that bring rain. Light clouds, you know those little ding, dinghy clouds we see in Dallas sometimes? They don't bring any rain. They're cute. You know, they look like teddy bears sometimes, or whatever. What does it look like? But... They don't bring rain. The heavy clouds, the, the big ones, they're the ones that bring rain and the ones that have thunder in them. So now what's next? Now we, we, just, heard, we just saw lightning. What do you expect next? Thunder. وَيُسَبِّحُ الرَّعْدُ بِحَمْدِهِ And the thunder, it declares Allah's perfection. The thunder is a form of tasbih by doing its, His hamd. SubhanAllah. The thunder is the sky doing tasbih. So when we hear thunder, what should just come out of our tongues? Subhanallah. Actually, we should even say, You know? And the angels are doing so too. Min khifatihi. Out of his fear. The thunder is scary, and Allah is adding, the angels and the thunder are doing tasbih of Allah from his fear. We're afraid of them, and they're afraid of Allah. Min khifatihi. Wa yursilu sawa'iqa. And then sometimes he sends thunderous explosions or, or like lightning explosions. فَيُصِيبُ بِهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ Then he targets with them and he afflicts with them whoever he wants. وَهُمْ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ And they're going to debate about Allah. Allah is saying this is happening in the sky. Thunder is happening. Lightning is being prepared. And these insect-like human beings are standing on the ground arguing about Allah. Do you realize what you're doing? هُمْ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ وَهُوَ شَدِيدُ الْمِحَالِ It's like a question, exclamation, exclamation, question, exclamation. وَهُوَ شَدِيدُ الْمِحَالِ What's the new word here? مِحَالِ مَحُولَ مَحُولَ To use extreme force against someone. أَحَدْ كَلِمَاتْ لِلطَّاقَةِ لِلْقُوَةِ When you use extreme force against someone. But it also includes it at the meaning of planning an attack against someone. So not only are you far more superior than your enemy, but you have a thorough plan to completely annihilate your enemy. That kind of an attack is called, or that kind of power and capability is called, mihal. It combines the, the power of hawl, hawl, power, with uh, uh, hila, plotting and planning. Both of them together. You know how we say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah? So this is, wa huwa shadidun mihal. He's intense in executing a plan, and executing an attack, a well laid out attack against the enemy. Lahu da'watul haq. It's a beautiful phrase. Lahu da'watul haq. So small, easy to remember. He alone owns. Now, a, a literal translation would say, He alone owns the call of truth. The call of truth. One of the, there's two ways you can look at it. One meaning obviously is, the call he's making, he possesses the invitation to the truth. Any other invitation that comes from anywhere else is not the truth. This is the invitation, Islam is the invitation to the truth and he, he alone owns it. Meaning the messenger doesn't even own it. He doesn't even have up to him what to say. The, the thunder and the, the angels are all scared of Allah. The messenger is scared of Allah. 
He doesn't open his mouth except to do tasbih of Allah. He owns that call, not the messenger. That's one meaning. The second meaning, da'wah in the meaning of dua. Da'wah in the meaning of dua. What does dua mean? Supplication, calling Allah. He's saying, anybody, mushrik, you know, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever, they're all either holding their hands like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Whatever hand formation they make, they're all making a form of dua, aren't they? Allah is saying nobody actually, their duas didn't go anywhere. The only real dua, the only one who actually made a call that somebody was on the other end was Allah Azza wa Jal. He's the only one that the true call is made to. All those other ones are wrong numbers you're dialing. All those other, you know, re recipient sent back mail mailer demon. <laughs> I call him mailer demon. The jinn that doesn't like your emails. And those who are you're calling, besides Allah, now he explains further, they're not going to be responding. They can't even try to respond to them in any way, shape, or form. Like someone, now where are we? We're in the desert. In the desert, a common phenomenon in the desert, we already kind of referred to here before, Sarabin bin Nahar, right? Walking around, going into a hole, but sarab also means a mirage. The fake water is sarab, real water is sharab. Sarab, sharab. Okay? Now you see this guy is desperate traveling in the desert, and he thinks it's water. So he extends his hands out. Like somebody praying extends their hands out. So he extends his hand out toward water. Liablu ghafahu. So he can drink from it. Wa ma huwa It's not going to reach him at all. This guy is exercise in foolishness. He's delusional. That's the imagery of someone making dua to other than Allah. Can you imagine? SubhanAllah. Those, those uh, uh, Mormon kids I told you about, I said, who do you pray to? They said, Jesus. I said, so he's God to you? They said, yes. Then I asked them the standard question. But he died on the cross, right? Yes. How long? Three days. So who was running the universe? For three days. Did he pretend to die? Did he really die? He really died. Okay. So who was running the universe? God was. <laughs> so he's not God. Because God was still alive. Yeah, so, so do you worship God or do you worship Jesus? They go, we worship Jesus. We worship God through Jesus. It's like, good comeback. Well done. Except, why do you have to worship him through Jesus? Did Abraham have to worship God through Jesus? Did Noah have to worship Him through Jesus? Did Moses, in your book, have to worship God through Jesus? Why did nobody else that you mentioned have to worship God through Jesus? Why did He? Why can't you just say that He worshipped God Himself too? And He didn't want anybody to go, you didn't have to go through anyone to get to God. Why could you just do that? Because so we'll talk about it later, I guess. It's a good question. It's like, okay. We'll talk again, guys. Enjoy the bike ride. <laughs> Left. But they gave me their 10, 13 commandments. They're very, 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 very entertaining, 13 commandments. Some of them very good, some of them really disturbing. Actually, Mormons, interestingly on a tangent, also believe that we are not born into sin. Interestingly. So, I mean, it's a good start. You know. So he can reach his mouth. It's not going to reach him at all. What are the prayers, the night vigils, the let's hold our hands, let's have a moment of silence, let's accept in vain. Lost. Lost God. Let's hold the candle all night long. You know? And then you have the emissary saying, Brother, why shouldn't we join them? Go oh, join them. Just recite this first. Then go make dua. It's all good. You know? وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرُونَ إِلَّا فِي ضُلَالٍ وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ وَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To Allah alone, everything in the skies and the earth falls in sajda. And by the way, Allah mentions the thing that is high first, the sky. And the act of sajda is the act of coming low. Right? High or low, it comes before Allah. طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا Willingly and unwillingly. Willingly and unwillingly, it falls before Allah. طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَظِلَالُهُمْ And even their shadows make sajda to Allah. Allah is now describing to us that shadows do sajda. 
Every time you see a shadow, it's a reminder of sajda. Some use this to interpret when najmu wa shajaru, yes, Sudan. That planets have a shadow. That every tree has a shadow, and that shadow itself is a form of its sajda. Wa dilaluhum bil ghuduwi wal asal in the morning hours and in the evening hours. This is an ayah of sajda, so let's not delay it. Let's do the sajda now and then come back. Ayah number 16. قُلْ مَنْ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قُلِ اللَّهِ Tell them, who is the Lord? Who is the master of the skies and the earth? Say Allah. قُلْ أَفَتَّخَذْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَا Tell them, have you dared taken any besides him as protective friends and guardians? لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ نَفْعًا وَلَا ضَرًّا They can't even have any control over their own selves in terms of benefit or harm. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ Tell them. Is the one who can see and the one who can't see equal? Am hal tastawa dunumatu wa nur, or are the shades of darkness and light or ever going to be equal? Am jaalu lillahi shuraka, or have they associated partners with Allah, made partners with Allah, installed partners with Allah? Khalaqu ka khalqihi that have created like He can create. They made something like he makes. But ashaba al khalku alayhim. Then confusion, be, then creation became confusing for them. When they looked at it, they said, "Is this by Allah? Is this by this one? Or is it by that one?" Qulil Lahu Khaliqu Kulli Shay. Tell them Allah is the Creator of all things. Wa Hu Al Wahid, and He is the only. He is the one. Al Qahar, the undeniable, the dominant. Anzal min al Sama Ima. And this is what I was telling you. My, one of my favorite parables in the surah. He sends water down from the sky. فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا Then valleys fill to their measure. As much as they can, valleys start filling up. فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِيَةٌ Then the flood waters, سَيْل, they start carrying the foam. زَبَد is the foam. رَابِيًا فَمْ رَبَى يَرْبُو To rise. رِبَى literally arise. Right? A rising in your income, an impermissible rise in your income is called riba. But riba also is growth of plants. And from the the, the, the fa'il form of it, we get rabba yurabbi tarbiya, growth, development. Right? So zabad al rabiya, the foam starts rising. Wa mimma yuqiduna alayhi finnar. And of it is what you are you burn, or what they burn rather, into fire, what they place into fire. Ibtigha'a hiliyatin, in pursuit of jewelry. So people are burning metals, and they're trying to make jewelry. Or they're making other utensils like forks and spoons and knives and things like that. Crockery. Not crockery, but metal stuff. Shovels. Zabadun misluhu gets a similar kind of foam. So there's two kinds of foam described. There's a foam that comes from flood. The flood comes and fills a valley and takes, you know, there's uh, twigs, little pebbles, you know, small rocks dried up de de dead leaves and things like that, crushed hutam basically on the floor, and the flood water comes and cleans it all out. It sails, you know, sails away with it. Dirt, like if you notice in your driveway or in your street, there's a lot of dirt. But once it rains, the dirt cleans out and the street looks brand new. Right? This is, the, the flood water's coming and taking away the dirt. But then, so, that's the foam. Now, when this dirt is carrying and the water is carrying it, there's water on the bottom and then there is this like, Foam on top, right? It's this like crusty thing. If you go to a beach that has a lot of algae, you'll notice foam, right? Bubbly foam on top. So Allah says this foam rises to the top. It's rising. Now another scene, it's like a cut scene and you're now inside a factory that's making jewelry for Walmart. And they're burning metals, right? And they're, they're, they're burning metals and what's happening? There's foam rising to the top. So there's two kinds of foam that are being described. One as a result of cool, coolness, meaning water. The other as a result of heat, burning metals. Obviously, which foam is easier? Which foam is easier? The water foam. Just, you know, it, the rain came and it filled every valley and it produced foam. كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ وَالْبَاطِلَ That is how Allah strikes truth against falsehood. Also means that's how Allah gives the example of truth and falsehood. My goodness. What is this talking about? Did I talk about this in divine speech? Did I cover this? Somewhat? Maybe, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. 
but I don't care. I'll repeat it. Okay. Allah sends water down from the sky. What did I say water is parallel to in this surah? Revelation. Allah sent Quran from, from the sky. Did He send it to a valley? Biwadin ghayridi dhar'in. He sent it to a valley, didn't He? Okay. Fasalat awdiyatun bi qadariha. Then the valleys started filling up to their measure. Some valleys are deeper, they can get, hold more water. Some valleys are shallow, they can hold less water. So as much as they can hold, they, could, they, they took. In other words, the message of Islam, the Qur'an came and it filled every street of Mecca. Like the water goes and finds any opening it can. And the message went everywhere until the streets were flooded with the message of Islam and it couldn't take any more so they had to kick the messenger out. It filled up, Ali Sattu Sam. They had to kick the messenger and the Sahaba out. Now as water that fills up into the, in the, into the valley, of course water gives life to the earth. We've learned that. But Allah says there are some elements on the earth that are just purely dirt and dirty and they're no good to the earth. The only thing that really should happen with those things is they should rise to the top and be cleaned off. The believers took in the water. The disbelievers are like the foam on top. They rose to the top. It became very clear who will accept the water and who will reject the water. It became very, very clear. There was no confusion. Now the Prophet, inshallah, eventually was, is going to go to Medina. It's actually because of this parable, some scholars believe that this part of the surah is Madani. Others say this was foretold. So now the Prophet's in Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa What's the filth of Medina? The munafiqun, the hypocrites. But the hypocrites are not easily, once the ayat come, the kafir says, I'm a kafir. I love being a kafir. I'll make fun of your religion too. So he rises himself to the top easily, like water foam rises to the top. But metal, the, the impurities of metal don't just rise to the top if you pour water on them. What do you have to do? You have to burn them in extreme temperatures and then the impurities rise to the top and make the foam. The munafiqoon are deeply embedded inside the Muslim community. They're not just going to separate easily. You have to be under extreme temperatures for them to be separated. So the heat of battle. The heat of Badr, the heat of Uhud, the heat of Ahzab will expose the munafiqoon. That foam will rise, but it takes a little bit of heat, or sometimes a lot of heat. Now who's burning? Everybody. The entire metal is burning, just so a few filth can rise to the top. وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء So Allah can know who really believes. So Allah can know who really believes. So Allah puts the believers in difficult situations, so that the foam can rise to the top. Surah Al-Ankabut will tell us the same thing. Allah will expose those who are hypocrites when tough times come. Surah Al-Ankabut is all about tough times. That's its subject matter. So, فَاحْتَمَلَ السَّيْلُ زَبَدَ الرَّابِيَ The foam carried the filth over. And then there's the second kind of filth. But when Allah talks about the second kind of filth, alluding to the war, you know, the, the battles in Islam, Allah says you, you go into the battlefield, you burn these metals, and you have two goals in front of you. Ibtigha'a hilyatin al matain. Either you're pursuing jewelry or what else? Utensils. Utensils. Now, obviously, if you're going to make all the effort to burn jewelry or burn metal, what would you rather get out of it? The more valuable thing, jewelry. It's more valuable. Mata'a is mata'a, it's not that valuable. But what is this referring to? When the Muslims go into battle, there are two incentives in front of him there's Jannah. Now, what's the number one goal? What's the, what's the reward? Jannah. But what is the utensils, the secondary goal? And secondarily, you people love that you should have victory of, you know, help from Allah and victory should arrive. Help from a line victory is like the spoon and the fork. And the reward of Jannah is like the gold. So Allah says they're both legitimate causes, but you should keep a priority. Keep the jewelry as jewelry, keep the utensils as utensils. Now, That is how Allah clashes truth against falsehood in the, in the age of da'wah. That truth against falsehood is by the message spreading everywhere. The believers will be separated from the disbelievers, the more the message spreads. In the situation of a Muslim community that is formed, 
and has become a, a, you know, a power in and of itself, then it's going to be extremely difficult circumstances that will expose the hypocrites for who they are. But that truth, the, the clash will continue. Now the, the parable continues. Allah says, فَأَمَّا zabadu." As for the foam, فَيَذْهَبُوا جُفَاءً This is actually the first foam. The first foam was from metal or from rain? It was from rain. That's the first one. We'll see why. Because in the, as the ayah continues, it goes back to the earth. I was referring to what water runs the earth. As for the foam, then it will go, it will be tossed out. It will go, and tossed out. The Arab says, you know, you leave a kettle boiling, like tea or something, and it boils and there's bubbly stuff on top, and you don't turn the stove off, and what happens? The, the kettle itself, the pot itself starts kicking out the bubbles, and starts pouring out. This is called ijfa. That's what they call ijfa. So jufa'an, it's just thrown out, it's cast off. So Allah is saying, as for that foam, don't worry about it, it'll be thrown away, like trash. Jufa is also actually one of the words for trash. It'll be thrown out like trash. So Allah is already calling the fact that the kuffar of Makkah are going to be eliminated, like trash. They're nothing. And as for what benefits the people? Now what benefits the people? The water that went inside and the good soil. The good soil is like the believers. Very interesting language. One of the words in Arabic to remain somewhere. Like baqiya. Or asha even. You know how we say khalidina fiha abada? What does Surah Al-Kahf say? Makithina fihi abada. Right? Makithina. Makatha to remain in wait of something. To remain somewhere, waiting for something. It's beautiful. Musa alayhi salam tell, tells his family to wait. Does he say, intadiru? He says, what? Umkuthu, inni alastu nara. Stay here. Wait. In other words, they're not going to stay there forever. They're going to go on. Even the believers that will stay know that they're waiting for a better destination. Even the ones that Allah put on the earth, they're not khalideen, they're makithin. They're just here, they're going to stay, but they know they're waiting for something even more. They're waiting for something else. يَمْكُثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَذَلِكَ يَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالِ That is how Allah strikes examples. It's a beautiful conclusion actually. If you appreciate the power and the eloquence and the, you know, the brief, in this brief uh, example, Allah captured the entire seerah of the Prophet Makkan period, Madani period, the whole thing. You know, and by capturing all of that in one place, then Allah says, by the way, that's how it's done. <laughs> that is how Allah strikes examples. husna. <laughs> and so beautiful, right? They're sitting, they're in the earth waiting. Waiting for what? husna. <laughs> for those who responded to their master is the very best. The very best. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَسْتَجِبُوا لَهُمْ and those who didn't respond to him, لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا Had they had everything on the earth altogether. Now what does the word لَوْ mean? Had. It looks back at the past. It's a kalima of hasr also, of regret. لَوْ The previous ayah already established that those who didn't respond to Allah are compared to what? Froth, bubbles, foam. Will they have any place in the land or will they be eliminated? Allah is saying, I've already told you they got no place in the world. They got no place on the earth. But even if they did have it, even, let's just say, give them the best case scenario. This is the reality, they don't have the best case scenario. But even if they did, but what happened? Had they had everything on the earth altogether, and another like it, right along with it, they would have given it up in ransom. Fidya, to free someone. They would have given, the, given it up in, in ransom. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ سُوءُ الْحِسَابِ Those are the people that are going to have the worst kind of audit. These are some of the scariest ayat of Qur'an because Allah did not say سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ He said سُوءُ الْحِسَابِ كَمَا لَيْسَ هُنَاكَ فَرْقِ كَمَا لَيْسَ هُنَاكَ فَرْقِ As though there's no difference. When Allah says they'll have the worst audit, the toughest accounting, line by line analysis, there's no difference between that and punishment itself. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ and their final place is Jahannam, wa bi'is al mihad, and what a terrible cradle that is, what a terrible hugging womb that is, or hugging the hug of a mother that is. أَفَمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مَنْ رَبِّكَ الْحَقِّ 
Then, as, the, as for the one who knows that what has, sent, what has been sent down to you from your master is the truth. See this whole sending down, sending down, sending down. It keeps making us think about the sky. Right? Whatever has come down to you from your master is in fact the truth. That person, كَمَنْ هُوَ أَعْمَى Is he going to be like someone who's blind? Blindness is important to mention here. Particularly, why someone blind can't appreciate the greatness of the sky? Can't appreciate something coming from below. They don't even know. They just know it's here. They don't know where it came from. Someone who has eyes knows it came from above. The only people who will make an effort to remember are the people that possess sound minds. Those who fulfill the promise made with Allah. And they don't violate the promise, the, 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 the contract. Mithaq keeps coming up, a quick reminder, when both parties are equally aware of the seriousness of the agreement. وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَىٰ And those who keep joined what Allah has com- commanded to keep joined. There's a very comprehensive statement in the deen. Well, some, some phrases in the Qur'an capture the essence of the entire religion. This is one of them. They keep together what Allah commanded to keep together. Our loyalty to the book and the messenger. Keep it together. Our concern for dunya and the akhirah. Keep it together. Keep it combined. Our belief in you know, this life and the next life. Keep them together. The, the, and our knowledge and our action, you keep them together. Family relations, you don't cut them, you keep them together. So things that are supposed to be kept together are never taken apart. أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَىٰ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ And they feared their master. وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ And they feared the worst kind of audit. وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا اِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ And those who were patient in pursuit of the face of their master, meaning the pleasure of their master. وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا And they established prayer and they spent مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ From whatever we had given to them سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً Secretly and publicly عَلَانِيَةً Publicly Openly Announced وَيَدْرَعُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةً Beautiful phrase They ward off, they push دَرَعَ You guys actually know a phrase that has to do with دَرَعَ إِنَّ دَرَعَ الْمَفْسَدَةً مُقَدَّمْ عَلَى جَلْبِ الْمَصْلَحَةً دَرَ دَرْ is the مَصْدَرْ So دَرَأَ يَدْرَأُ To push somebody hard to get them away from trouble Like a car is coming and you push your friend over to the other side of the street He gets injured a little bit but you saved his life This is دَرَ This literally means دَرَ To push somebody to save them So they save themselves literally By pushing good deeds ahead of bad deeds Meaning they push the good deed away they save themselves from it by put, immediately following a bad deed with a good deed. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقْبَ الدَّارِ They are going to have the ultimate outcome of a home. The, the best possible home. Uqba is the, the feminine superlative equivalent of aqab. Aqab. And it actually refers to the outcome. Usually it's used in a good sense. So uqba الدَّارِ The best possible home. The most beautiful of homes. جَنَّاتُ adnin يَدْخُلُونَهَا The gardens of Eden. Literally, Eden, Aden, that they're going to be entering. And it's not just one garden, it's multiple gardens. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ You know, I imagine, Allahu alam how this is going to manifest. How do you enter multiple gardens? How do you enter multiple gardens? Your entrance is on top. And now you see multiple valleys going into multiple gardens. And you've literally entered the main, and you just get to pick which one you want to go to. جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهُ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ Very powerful and very unique ayah in the Qur'an has a very important lesson for us. And whoever was righteous among their parents. There are four categories of people that make it to Jannah. النَّبِيِّين الصِّدِّقِين الشُّهَدَاء and الصَّالِحِين What's the minimum? Salihin is the passing grade, minimum 65, barely got through Salihin. Then you have people above them, above, you know, there's, there's above them is shuhada, above them are siddiqeen, and above them is the rank nobody can reach except the, the ones Allah chose and nabiyyin, right? So there are ranks. Now, Allah says something awesome. These are jannat adan. Are these low levels of paradise or high levels of paradise? These are of the higher levels of paradise. But maybe you have relatives that made it to jannah. We're not talking about relatives that didn't make it to jannah. We're talking about relatives that made it to jannah, but they made it to jannah and maybe some lower levels. And you made it all the way to a higher level. And we know that the distance between one Jannah to the next is what? It's infinite distance. Skies in the earth. Like it's, it's an infinite amount of distance. 
Sometimes the Prophet would describe it as the distance you see between you and the stars. Like, you look at a star, that's the next level. Oh, wow, that's kind of far. So now your, your cousin is down there, you're up there. Or you're down here, your cousin's up there. Allah says, one of the benefits of the people of Jannah will be, if one of your family members made it up there and you're down here, they won't be called down. You will be called up. So you can be together. SubhanAllah. So people will enjoy the highest level of Jannah based on the family member of theirs that made it way up there. Now, this, first of all, make it to Jannah before you talk about this. This is not people are going to be dragged out of hell and taken to the highest levels of Jannah because they got connections with the, you know, Hey, uncle, ayyuha siddiq. Yeah, it's <laughs> not going to work. Man salaha min aba'ihim wa azwajihim wa dhurriyatihim. Whoever was righteous among their ancestry, so if, for example, you and me make it to the barely got through Jannah, last people to get into Jannah, and our great, 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 great grandfather is like up in Firdaus, chilling, he's make a call. And all of us show up. You're my granddad? Thank you, grandpa. Thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> Or it may be that our ancestry was, you know, not holding on to the deen as much. And the future generations, great, great, great grandkids really, you know, grabbed the flag of Islam. They, they, they held on to it. And they're way up there and they get to call their, their ancestry. All the way, you know, all, from the previous generations all the way up, subhanAllah. Well, as well, and even their wives and their future children. Their lineage of, you know, abna'ihim would have been just your kids. Dhuriyat, generations of children. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابِ And the angels are coming at them from every door. So they've got this major living room situation and they've got all these doors. And the angels are the escorts to these family members. So the angels are coming, we have some more cousins for you. And we have your grandfathers here. And your uncles here. And your cousins here. And they're just, the angels themselves are bringing from every door. Multiple doors. SubhanAllah. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ Salam. Who's saying salam? Actually, it's not limited. Allah didn't say. Allah didn't say. It could be from Allah Himself. Salamun qawlam al rahim It could be from the angels. It could be from all the family. It could be from all the other believers. Salam just everywhere. Illa qilan salaman salama. Bima sabartum. Because of the patience you showed. Fani'ma uqbaddar. What an awesome final home this is. How, how well the patience paid off. Last ayah before we close. وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ And those who cut apart, violate the promise made with Allah. Even after it was made with mutual understanding. The agreement was, the contract, the covenant was taken. وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَى And they cut apart whatever Allah had commanded to keep together. وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And obviously this addition, وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ If you notice in contrast in the previous, Allah Azza wa Jal said, let's go back to that ayah for a second. وَيَسِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ الَّذِينَ يَسِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلَى وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ So it's internal. But here, وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ It's external. They're, cause, they're not just harming themselves, they're causing harm to others in the land. When you violate the, the teachings of deen, you're not just harming yourself. When you cut apart what Allah has commanded to keep together, there are always consequences. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ اللَّعْنَى Those are the people that have a curse. وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ <clears throat> they're going to have the worst possible home that there can be. So we'll leave it at that because the next conversation is a new discussion. This was the, you know, now that you know where you're headed, here's the congratulations and here's the curse. So if I, you remember the, the introduction? And then Allah will talk about you're not the only ones. There are people of the book that have come to hear about this message. Let's find out some of their reactions. So we'll come back and study that. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر وفرحوا بالحياة الدنيا وما الحياة الدنيا في الآخرة إلا متاع رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل نقطة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ثم أما بعد آية نمبر 26 of سورة الرعد الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر Allah expands the provision of whoever He wants and He contracts it. Basata qadara. The two, the two come in uh, contrast. There's another verb that comes yaqbidu. Yaqbidu. 
But yab sutu wa yakdiru. He expands it, he opens it. And then, uh, you know, like kabasiti kafehi, the one who extends his hands. So he extends the risk and he contracts. Also means he calculates, meaning he becomes very precise and gives him exactly what he deserves. Wa farihu. And they were overjoyed. Bil hayatid dunya with worldly life by itself. Wa mal hayatid dunya fil akhirati illa matah. And what was worldly life in comparison to the next except nothing, nothing but utility. And in, interest, interestingly, in the same surah, the argument about utility being inferior and something else being superior has already been mentioned. The akhirah, like hilya, and dunya being matah. Right? So once again, what's, what's akhirah compared to dunya except just matah? وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ They repeat. Those, disbelieve, those who disbelieve say, how come no miracle comes to him from his master? قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنَابٍ Tell them, no doubt about it, Allah guides whoever, misguides rather, whoever He wants, and He guides towards Him whoever is going to come back, whoever is going to return. Anaba, one of the words for raja, it's used in the spiritual sense only. Munib, the one who returns back to Allah. What the ayah is suggesting is, they're saying, show us a miracle, and let them know, look, if you had any intentions of coming back to Allah, Allah would have guided you. You would have seen the miracle, it would have been enough for you. You have no intentions of turning back to Allah, so it wouldn't even matter for you. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Those who believe, meaning the, ones who, the one who returns, what are they like? They're like the ones who believe. And their hearts are content by the remembrance of Allah. تَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Notice when it was mentioned for worldly life, the, the, the wording was فَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They were overjoyed with worldly life. And farah in Arabic is something temporary. You can't say stay farah all the time, like overjoyed. But itminan or itminan, constancy, tranquility, calmness, that can become a permanent state. And that's for the people who have the remembrance of Allah in their hearts. May Allah grant all of us that. Know that by remembering Allah, hearts become tranquil, hearts become calm. In this ayah also, there's a great psychological remedy for any of you that are going to pursue Islamic psychology, Quranic psychology, and one day become counselors. The remembrance of Allah calms hearts down. I've got stress. I've got anger issues. I, got really, I get really worried. The adhkar of Allah, the remembrance of Allah itself, in and of itself is a healer. It calms people down. It, it calms people down. It brings down the nerves. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believed and acted in right, uh, righteously did the few righteous deeds. طُوبَ لَهُمْ Tuba is a beautiful word also. A joy that brightens up the heart and all the senses. That's tuba. It's not just something that you feel emotionally. You feel like exhilarated. That's tuba. Wa husnu ma'ab. And it's uh, the most beautiful place of return. Another word for return now from the verb aba. The past tense verb is aba. I believe it's aba ya'ub. I could be wrong about that. But it's, it's more specific than raja ayarji'u. Raja ayarji'u also means to return. Ma'ab is the ism dharf from Aba. It's the dharf from Aba. And it's specifically used for living things. It's not used for anything else. And Ma'ab literally is used also, or Iab actually. Iab is used for the trip back. Like you went to Richardson or you went to Louisiana or something and you're driving back. That your trip back is Iab. Husnu Ma'ab, what a beautiful place to go back to. In it there's a beautiful hint. Human beings were taken out of, out of Jannah. And they finally get to come back. What a beautiful comeback. What a beautiful return journey to the original home that was made for the human beings. كَذَلِكَ أَرْسَلْنَا فِي أُمَّةٍ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا That is how we sent in a nation that had come much before this, أُمَمٌ uh, um, In every uh, nation upon nation. لِتَتْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلَّذِي أَوْحِنَا إِلَيْكَ So that you would recite unto them what has been revealed to you. وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ the Rahman, and they disbelieve in Ar-Rahman specifically. The, the mention of Ar-Rahman here is for a couple of reasons. First of all, there are many nations much before that have come, and their examples have come much be before you. And you're being made to read what they were given. So you're not doing anything new. And they're disbelieving in the extremely merciful, even though they know that those other nations, they exhausted Allah's mercy on them, and they ended up being destroyed. Allah is being extremely merciful to them and they still don't want to take advantage of it. They don't want to take, you know, Ar-Rahman, the ism mubalagha, it's something that can be taken away. In other words, you can get disqualified from the Rahmah of Allah. It's possible. Ar-Rahim is constant. That's why believers enjoy Rahim in the Akhirah. 
The other meaning here is they didn't know when, whenever the Prophet would say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, they'd say, Who, who's this ar-Rahman? We don't know this one. What are you talking about ar-Rahman? Never heard of it before, etc. So Allah is saying, oh, so they want to disbelieve in ar-Rahman. Qul huwa Rabbi. Tell them it's my master. La ilaha illa huwa. Alayhi tawakkaltu. There's no one to be worshipped and obeyed in any way, shape or form, but he, upon him alone I have relied, I've placed my trust. Wa ilayhi matab. And to him my place of return and my turning back is. Matab is both physical here and spiritual. So there was ma'ab, the place to go back to. And now we're seeing matab. Taba and ab are actually both for going back. Tawbah is the act of coming back to Allah. To him my repentance, to him my spiritual coming back. وَلَوْ أَنَّ قُرْآنًا سُيِّرَتْ بِهِ الْجِبَالِ And if, this, if, we, if there was a Qur'an by means of which mountains would move, أَوْ قُطِّعَتْ بِهِ الْأَرْضِ or pieces of the earth would get chopped up, meaning earthquakes would happen and people, you know, earthquakes just cracks would happen in the earth and they would get cut. أو كُلِّمَا بِهِ الْمَوْتَى Or the dead were spoken to by means of it. But Allah didn't even end that sentence. He just says, if, even if that was the case, these guys lost cause. It's like a dot, dot, dot there. Dot, dot, dot. بَلْ لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ جَمِيعًا Rather, the entire decision rests with Allah. He owns the entire matter. In other words, they're not in charge of what Allah will send and what Allah will not send. That's up to Allah. أَفَلَمْ يَيْأَسِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Have the believers not, not last, lost hope? Has this not happened to the believers? يَيْأَسْ To lose hope, right? And lose hope in what? أَلَّوْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ لَهَدَ النَّاسِ جَمِيعًا Have they not lost hope that had Allah wanted, Allah would have guided all of humanity? All of humanity could have been guided in one shot. But Allah says that's not the amr of Allah. And believers, don't lose hope. Don't become like this. Don't just start, don't entertain that thought when you're carrying the message of Islam. وَلَا يَزَعْلُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا تُصِيبُهُمْ بِمَا صَنَعُوا قَارِعَةٌ قَارِعَةٌ is the fa'il of تُصِيبُهُمْ So you have to separate the two. The disbelievers will continue to. Now what will they continue to do? A qari'a, a terrible calamity, is going to afflict them because of what they have done. And it's still going to afflict them. In other words, no matter what they do, the eventual you know, consequences that are coming their way cannot be dispelled, cannot be uh, cancelled out. وَتَحُلُّ قَرِيبًا مِنْ دَارِهِمْ And it's going to be unleashed. That qari'a, that loud explosion is going to be unleashed very soon, very very close to their homes. قَرِيبًا مِنْ دَارِهِمْ So Allah Azza wa is not talking about their homes, but He's saying some bad stuff is going to start happening near their homes. Now what bad stuff started happening to the Quraysh near their homes? Well, Badr. Uhud, right? This is near their homes, and some of the consequences are starting to going to start happening. وَيَأْتِيَ وَعْدُ اللَّهِ and the promise of Allah will come. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُخْلِفُ الْمِيعَادِ No doubt, Allah does not go back on the promise. وَلَقَدْ إِسْدُوزِ أَبِرُسُلِ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Then messengers were made fun of before too, much before you also. فَأَمْلَيْتُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا دَنَا أَمْلَا يُمْلِي إِمْلَا to extend, to extend. فَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ إِنَّ كَيْدِي مَتِينَ Allah says. So, أَمْلَيْتُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا I have extended for those who disbelieve. And I've given you the example of uh, the extension in the beginning when we're talking about Baqarah. The dog that has an extra long leash that goes running wild. If it had a one foot leash, it wouldn't have been choked. But if it's got a 200 foot leash and it's going wild galloping, by the time it hits this 200 foot leash, it's choked to death even. Right? It's not, it hits him much harder. So Allah says, I've extended to those for those who disbelieve. أَخَذْتُهُمْ Then I've seized them. Now he doesn't say here, ثُمَّ سَآخُذُهُمْ كَأَنَّ هَذَا وَعْدُ مفعول. It's done. Finished. I've already, it's already a done deal that I've got a hold of them. He mentioned it in the past tense, as though it's already done. فَكَيْفَ كَانَ عِقَابٌ Then how was my taking revenge? How was the, how was the punishment that I dish out? أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ As for the one who stands over every soul, every person, because of what he or she has done. Dot, dot, dot. There's not a complete sentence here. Just like the previous one, in a style sense, it's actually a disappointment of Allah. Are they going to then disbelieve in someone who stands over every soul, over every single thing that he or she has done? جَعَلُوا وَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَ and they've made partners with Allah. قُلْ سَمُّوهُمْ أَمْ تُنَبِّئُونَ Tell, say, name them. سَمُّوهُمْ Name those gods. Who are they? Where they come from? What are their histories? 
am tunabbi'unahu bima la ya'lamu or are you informing him meaning Allah and the messenger of what bima la ya'lamu fil ardi of something he doesn't know about in the land maybe some secret gods came out and God Allah himself didn't know about it am bi zahirin min al qawl or is it just out, outwardly speech in other words you don't want to make it seem like the messenger stumped you when he asked you go ahead and name them so you're like uh, uh, you don't want to look like fools so you started making stuff up am bi zahir just to show that you can see, you got something to say am bi zahirin min al qawl bal zuyyina lil ladhina kafaru makruhum Rather, the case is, the fact of the matter is, it is for the disbelievers that their plotting and their scheming has been beautified for them. وَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they were themselves obstructed from the path of Allah. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلِ اللَّهِ And whoever Allah would mislead, فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ They are not going to find any guide whatsoever. What is this in contrast to that we found in the beginning of the surah? لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادِ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَادِ when someone just kicks away the, the gift that Allah Azza wa was sending their way, then they have no guide left. لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They're going to have punishment in worldly life. وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَشَقٌ And the punishment of the next life is far more difficult. شَقَّ الْأَمْرِ Something became very difficult. It became hard. أَشَقْ It's even more difficult. Also, shaqiq or shaq, mashaqqa, they say, for a task that's so hard, it's way beyond your capability. Wala adabu al akhirati ashaq. The punishment of the akhirah is way beyond any creature's capability to handle. Nobody can handle it. Nobody will develop a tolerance for it. And anybody, any creature would die if they experienced it. But Allah Azza wa Jal commanded these creatures that are made for hell to not be able to die. By definition, though, they can't handle it. Ashaq. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَاقِ And they're not going to have, if, as far as Allah is concerned, from Allah's side, or within Allah, they're not going to find any protector whatsoever. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وَعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ The example of paradise. What did I tell you about mathula? What did I tell you about the word mathula, you remember? Something you can visualize. So when Allah says, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وَعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ The example of gar- the, the garden, the ultimate garden, that's been promised to the believers, the pious, those who protected themselves, then the point of saying method is visualize it. Try to imagine it. Use the best of your capability to figure it out. And I guarantee you, whatever you imagine, it's going to be better than that. So you're literally supposed to recite these ayat, memorize them, and just kind of go a little wild in your imagination. It's okay, you're supposed to do that. Tajri min tahtiha al-anhar At the bottoms of which, the multiple gardens, maybe their own valleys, there are hills and hills and hills of gardens, and at the foots of them rivers are flowing. Ukuluha da'im. Its fruits are constant. They don't go bad. They're always there. They without any preservatives. You know? Wadilluha and its shade is constant. You know there's one part of the day. Sometimes you find a nice part of the day, like that day at the picnic. There's just one part of it where the breeze is perfect, the wind is great, just enough sun is coming through the leaves, and you're sitting there with the beautiful view of the water. And you're like, man, I wish every day could be like this. I wish it doesn't get any hotter or any cooler. I wish this day doesn't end. I wish I could just stay this is so perfect right now. You know that's so perfect right now? Walilluha da'im. It's there. It's always going to be there. You know? I mean, we have all had apples and oranges and fruits or whatever, but sometimes there's a strawberry that just kicks you in the face. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Where did you get these strawberries? But you eat the next one and it's not wow. It's like, why was the, f- the first one was amazing, you know? <laughs> well, so Allah says, ukulu hada'im. Its taste, its texture, its quality is constant. And the shade. Tilka uqba alladhina attaqaw. That is the final home, the eventual outcome of those who, who protected themselves. Wa uqba kafir And the final home of the dis- uh, kafirin, sorry, of the disbelievers, annar, fire. That's the only description necessary for them. Wa alladhina ataynahum kitab and those who we have given the book to previously, in other words, Jews and Christians, a group of them came to know that this man is claiming to be a messenger and is fulfilling, confirming previous scripture. Yafrahuna bima unzila ilayk. They are overjoyed in what has been revealed to you. Why? Because they get, you know, have you heard the good word? The final messenger is coming. The comforter is coming. He's coming to deliver the people with God's words. You know, for, the, for one final time. They had these words of Allah, these promises of Allah, uncorrupted. They're waiting for this to happen. So when it happens, they don't see it as competition. 
They don't see it as a negation of their faith. They see it as a confirmation of it. They're overjoyed. They're celebrating. Actually, there's one Sahabi story so beautiful. When the Messenger, I think it was Abu Musa al-Ashari, I could be wrong about that. But he goes to the Sahabi's house and he shows him a letter of his ancestors, five, six generations before, that had moved to Medina specifically because they believed, according to prophecy, the final messenger will come. And so as they died, they would write a letter, Ya O Messenger of Allah, we came waiting for you. Maybe our children will see you. SubhanAllah. <laughs> and he shows him the letter. You know? So they're, they're overjoyed. Now, this, now the descendants eventually, you know, they, they, see, they hear the Messenger of Allah coming and they're overwhelmed. At the, I get to see that. My ancestors didn't get to see it. Six centuries have gone by, six and a half centuries since Isa alayhi salam, that the believers have been waiting. Of the people of the book, they've been waiting. And now they finally see it fulfilled. And among the factions, there are those who deny some of it. In other words, there are people of the book that, by the way, denying some of the book means what? All of it. Khuluf is silmi. Kafatan, all or nothing. It's not, a, it's not a discount program. But you know what they'll come to you? They'll say, we like this message. There's just some issues we have. But other than that, it's a pretty decent, you know, the Quran has some nice things to say, I hear. Okay, yeah, it's actually all of it is nice. And you know, we have such low self-esteem when somebody says, the Quran has some nice things. We say, yeah? Oh, we really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> it's not a, that's not a compliment. The Quran has some nice things to say. What's wrong with you Muslims? <laughs> No, your book has some nice things to say. All nice things are here. <laughs> this is Muhammad over your book. This watch is over your book. Man yunkiru ba'dahu. So they deny some of it. Qul innama umirtu an a'budallah. You see also you have to understand the messenger was not sallallahu alaihi wasallam in an academic advantage. These, these scholars of Christianity and Judaism are learned, they're well read. So they, when they speak, they speak like scholars. They speak like well-educated people. And you can feel a little overwhelmed when they speak. And the messenger is told, look, keep your message simple. You don't have to impress them. When they come to you and say, some of it is impressive, some of it is, you know, so maybe you have a little more philosophical take on things, or etc., etc. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ I have been commanded to worship Allah. That's it. I'm commanded to be a slave of Allah. وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ إِلَيْهِ إِلَيْهِ أَدْعُ and to not associate anybody with him. To him alone I call. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And to him the final place of return is. That's the only, that's the final journey back. The trip back is to him. We came from him, we're going to go back to him. That's it. That's, I'm going to keep it simple as that. That's my message if you accept it. وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا And that is how we have sent you an Arabic decisive word. Hukman. A word full of wisdom and a word that is decisive. In other words, you don't have to dilly-dally. You don't have to explain Islam to them with some philosophical explanation that was new and cutting edge. It's just present the Qur'an. I've given you what you have to present. Revelation is, the purpose of revelation is to talk to people. You don't have to talk on behalf of revelation. You can just re let revelation talk. Just do it. You know what's happened over time? We are, this is natural by the way. When we have a book like ours, the Qur'an, when we have a sunnah like our messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, then there's no doubt that it's going to give birth to endless amounts of scholarship. Endless. It's never going to come to an end. But this creates a paradigm, paradox. On the one hand, it's a good thing. That we have depths upon depths upon depths of study. On the other hand, it's a tragedy that people feel that they can no longer connect with revelation. Like they have to go through some really big scholarly hoops before they can connect to the word of Allah. Right? What scholarly hoops did the Quraysh, who had no idea of even what a messenger is, what the Akhirah is, what connection did they have with the Qur'an? A very direct one, right? So, on the one hand, our deen requires in-depth learning, and on the other hand, our deen requires that we take its essential text, the Qur'an, and make it common knowledge, easy for people to understand. It's both at the same time. And for the one who believes, and he, will, he wants to engage in the road of tadabbur, and tafakkur, and learn, and ta'allum, then he, that road never comes to an end, it'll keep going your whole life. And you'll be, barely scratch the surface of Allah's book. But to introduce people to God's conversation, that's part of our job. That's really part of our job. Allah addresses people directly. Ya yuhan nas. Ya yuhan nas. People, listen up. Well, why do we have to give them a tafsir of ya yuhan nas? Ya yuhan nas itself is... That itself is the speech. Give that to people. Share that with people. And that's the same with our families. Within the Muslim family, we're so disconnected from the Qur'an. We don't sit there and... 
you know, even after you, after parents learn a little bit of basic tafsir, they should actually just go through the surah and say, you know what Allah says to us here? You know what He says to us here? You know what He says to us here? Like Allah is talking to, to us. Your ch child comes to you with a problem. Oh, my friend, you were so mean to me today. I think Allah says something about that. Let's ask Allah. Put up the book. You know. Nobody should make fun of anybody else. That's what Allah says. Yeah, but they did it. Well, you know what Allah says? In Allah, you have sabirin. Allah loves people who are patient. Okay, mom. I'll be patient. Because Allah said so. Just let, let Allah's word become a part of the conversation. In our discourse with the Christians, with the Jews, with people of the book. What did Allah say? وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلَّهُ this is the final, this is the decisive word, it's Arabic. Perhaps also because one of the criticisms coming from the people of the book was, why isn't it in the language of the other scriptures? Why weren't the people of the book, whose, uh, whose scriptures are of different language, and are then translated into Arabic, why wasn't it in, in those scriptures? No, this final word is decisive in Arabic medium. And if you were to follow their empty desires, after knowledge has come to you, what knowledge has come to the Messenger? Quran. That's the knowledge that has come to him. In other words, they, and what's their ahwa? Talk about something other than the Quran. So just talk about something else. Well, this Quran is too direct, it's too blunt, it's too un uncompromising. Allah talks to us like He owns us. Well, He does. <laughs> you know? Someone who owns you will talk to you a certain way. Someone who works for you will talk to you differently. Somebody who you own will talk to you differently. Somebody who's negotiating with you will talk to you differently. When somebody's trying to make a sale with you, then they have a desperate tone in their speech. Then they have to compliment you and say, you know, you look nice in that car. Wow. Why would you get that shirt or something? I have to butter you up. Allah doesn't have to do that. So he's very uncompromising. He just tells it like it is. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it just calls people out. So you, and but because we have to represent Allah's word, People might feel like we're doing that. But we have to be as humble to Allah's word as the people we're delivering this message to. That's what the messenger had to be himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a, it's a very interesting combination. When this combination is not understood, you know what happens? You get a, you get a I don't want to use a bad word, but an overly confident da'i. A self-righteous, talk down to others kinds of inviter to Allah. Allah has a right to talk down to people. Allah has that right. We don't. We can't, Allah can take that tone, we can't. We can deliver Allah's message and be as scared of those words that we're giving to others for ourselves too. We're not saved that we say, well, we're here to save others. We're, we're just as much in need of this message as, as the next person. So, uh, You will not find any protective friend with Allah, nor will you find a protector, a guardian himself. And we had already sent, we truly had already sent many messengers from much before you. And they were people just like you, they had spouses, they had children, they were normal people. We didn't send angels before. There's no reason for us to send angels now. Because that's another criticism. How come no angel came? You're just a human. But no, Allah says we send messengers before too. And on top of that, not only were they not angels, when they were asked to show angels or show a proof, it was not becoming of any messenger to bring a proof, to bring a miracle. Except by Allah's permission. The miracles are not shown because the messengers place an order for them. Allah allows them to happen. For every deadline, there is a documented time. There is a declaration. Allah has declared when everything will take place. So if there's a time for them to see something, it'll come. Allah has already alluded in this that there is some sign coming. kitab. Some miracle is coming or some sign for them to open their eyes is coming. Allah obliterates, erases whatever He wants. وَيُثْبِتْ And He maintains whatever He wants. وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ kitab. And he, in his possession alone, is the mother of all books. In other words, the, the, the central book of revelation, that's what Allah in Lawhul Mahfuz, of which Quran is an installment. 
of Tawrat is an installment, Injil is an installment, Suhaib of Ibrahim are an installment, Zabur is an installment, Quran is the final installment. Allah possesses that book. And whatever, whatever of that Allah allows to be erased on this earth, and whatever Allah allows to make, be, you know, keep on this earth, that's up to Him. And if we were to show you even some of the things that we have in store for them, or some of the things we've promised them, some of the punishments, not all of them, or or we were to take you away completely. If we were to just show, show you some of these things, or to take you away, dot, dot, dot again. If that would happen, these guys would be finished. I don't even have to give them all my punishment, I would just have to do a little bit of it. And if I took you away, there would be no reason for them to be shown mercy anymore. So you don't worry about showing them anything. Because showing them something means their time is up. فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغِ Then your only job is to communicate a heart-penetrating message. Give, get, get a message out that reaches deep within. وَعَلَيْنَا الْحِسَابِ And leave the accounting to us. We alone are responsible for the audit. This is the ayah. This is the ayah where Allah basically, you know, they say, show us something, show us something. Allah says, fine, I'll show you something. It won't be on your terms though. Awalam yaraw, haven't they seen? And that we are attacking the earth. We are cutting it down. We are reducing it from all sides. Hasn't haven't the Meccans noticed that in these 10 years of them beating up on the Muslims, some people from outside of Mecca have come and they've taken Shahada. Haven't they noticed people like Abu Dhar Ghaffari, who came from Bani Ghaffar, and he's going to go back and spread that Dawah over there. Haven't they noticed people coming from different tribes, and as time possess, goes on, the seeds of Islam are going to start getting planted all around them, and the only shrub left that needs to be pulled out of the ground is them. You know, when you have a garden, and there's a, like a really bad plant in the middle, imagine. And the whole field was bad, but slowly you started seeing nice vegetation grow everywhere else. And so the only, the only thing that sticks out now, like a sore thumb, is the middle. That's Makkah. So Makkah is like that. It's gonna, the earth around it is going to start shrinking. It's already starting to happen. Haven't they noticed? Because they should have taken notice. Some progress is happening. Wallahu yahkum. La mu'aqib. And Allah, he, He's the one who gives a verdict. There is no one to follow up after his verdict. In other words, nobody's going to come after his verdict and change it. And he is quick in taking the audit. Question? I heard some noise. Okay. They, those who came much before also plotted and planned. Then Allah alone owns the entire plan. The messenger is being told, don't worry about it at this point. As the concluding remarks in this surah, Allah has already told, I'm shrinking the earth all around them. So they're on their way down. Let them plan whatever they can, it's okay. You know, it's like, uh, the, imagine an island that's slowly sinking and the earth is like shrinking around it. What, what's he going to do? What plans is he going to make? Don't worry about it. Let him yell and scream. يَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْسِبُ كُلُّ نَفْسِ He knows what every single individual earns. وَسَوَعْلَمُ الْكُفَّارُ لِمَنْ عُقْبَ الدَّارِ And soon disbelievers will find out who gets the final home. Who gets the most, the most incredible final home. The surah ends on a very important point. And that's a point that we have to have a little bit of a discussion on. First I'll translate the ayah, then we'll go back. وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا Disbelievers said, you're not someone who has been sent. مُرْسَلْ فَمْ أَرْسَلَ يُرْسِلُ رِسَالْ فَهُوَ مُرْسِلْ أُرْسِلَ يُرْسَلُ رِسَالًا فَهُوَ مُرْسَلْ So the one who has been sent. You haven't been sent. You're not someone who's been sent. Allah here could have said, the disbelievers say, we don't believe in Allah, we don't believe in the Akhirah, we don't believe in the Ayat, we don't believe in the Revelation. He specifically highlighted one aspect of kufr. And that is, you're not anything special. You're just a man. That's what's been highlighted. Kufr in Risala. Disbelief, just like Iman, is of three things. Iman is basically in three things. In Allah, in the Akhirah, and in Risala, basically. Everything else is a byproduct. Everything else we know about reality is a byproduct of believing in Allah, and believing in the afterlife, and believing in Risala. I've told you about this before. Just like that, kufr is of three things. Kufr in Allah, kufr in the Akhirah, and kufr in Risala. The surah is ending on the note of kufr in Risala. That's an important concept in Islam to understand. Why do people have kufr in Risala? Maybe there are people who believe in God. 
and they believe in the afterlife. Islam's argument is that's not enough. If you believe in God, you cannot believe in God correctly until you believe in the certified teacher sent by God. If you believe in the afterlife, you can't have the correct understanding of what that will look like unless you learn from someone who Allah Himself taught. That would be a messenger. Messengers become critical. Then you have another group of people who say, we believe in messengers, just not you as a messenger. We'd rather Joseph Smith. You see, we'd, we'd rather, we, or Jesus is enough, we're done. I'm full, thank you. There's no need for dessert. I'm happy with what I got. You know, that's enough for me. That's also kufr. Because we don't get to pick which messengers we like and we don't like. Just like the messengers don't get to pick whether they're messengers or not. They don't have that choice. The same way we don't have a choice in accepting or rejecting messengers. We don't. So, disbelievers, one of the reasons that they reject a messenger, and that becomes their faith, you know, basis for disbelieving, they have no problem in, let's say, Tawheed, and they have no problem in Akhirah. They just have a problem with Risala. Why? It boils down to authority. It just boils down to authority. In our religion, after all, we can say we obey Allah, but technically, practically, we obey the messenger. Practically speaking. Yeah, when we're, we're making salat, we're obeying Allah, absolutely. But practically, who are we praying like? The Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. We're worshipping Allah, absolutely. How are we worshipping Him? The way the Messenger instructed. We're dressing the way Allah wants us to dress. But who taught us that? The Messenger. So practically speaking, we're technically following a man. Who gets teachings from Allah? We understand that to be true. But for, you know, it's easy for people to say, I love God. I have no problem with God. I just want to follow a man. I don't want to follow a man. I met a woman one time and said, you, you know, all these messengers that are men, why should, why should I have to follow them? Why should I have to follow them? They're men. You know. I met a Muslim lady like that one time. She goes, I don't trust hadith because they're from Sahaba and most of them are men. So, okay, so Quran is from what woman? So, <laughs> she got really angry at me. It's like, you started it. It's like, <laughs> but anyhow, the idea of accepting authority is very difficult for people. And I've, I've said this to you guys before, but I'll repeat it. Us accepting Muhammad Rasulullah is a lot easier. It's so much easier because we don't see him in front of us. He's just, he's eating lunch too. He's God's messenger. The angel Jibreel talks to him. He comes out of the house and says, I was just at the seventh heaven. Received five prayers. Wait, where were you? Seventh heaven? What? When? Last night. First, actually, first I went to Jerusalem. Then I went to the seventh heaven. Then I came back and now I'm back. All of this in one night? Actually, no, not a whole night. No, no, no. That's, that's insane. Very small part of the night. Okay. Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi laylan. Asra bi abdihi laylan. It's actually taqlil. It's a very little part of the night that he did this. Now, Sahabi who's never seen an angel, never seen the, 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 you know, the, the winged horse, he's never seen anything. And he looks at him and he goes, yeah. What did you learn? What did you see? And he says, I saw glimpses of hellfire and I saw glimpses of paradise. And I met all the previous prophets and messengers. And I can imagine... It would take an incredible amount of faith for someone to hear that and without a second's hesitation say, of course. Tell me more. What else happened? SubhanAllah. That's Iman. And that's not easy. For us to read these hadith later on, we can teach them in Sunday school, it's easy. Because we're not there. That's real belief in the unseen. You hear a man speak and you know that that's not the man's words. It's an angel that's been given to him by God and it's coming through an unseen channel. SubhanAllah. He's sitting there with all the companions. All of a sudden he says, just received an ayah. You just received an ayah? When did that happen? Just, just, the angel just came. Guy comes dressed in white into the gathering, sits him down. Who's your master? What's Islam? What's Iman? What's Yahshan? And he leaves. People are like, that guy? Who was that guy? Who's that white guy? He's dressed in white, that's what I mean. <laughs> right? 
Oh, that was Angel Jibreel. What? Okay. <laughs> Not even a face. Nothing. Okay. That was Jibreel. Came to teach us our deen. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. I mean, I would, you can imagine if you just found out that was Angel Jibreel, you'd be conflicted. Should I go out and check him out? Like, catch a conversation? Or that would be pretty intimidating. Should we just stay inside? <laughs> It does kind of take over the whole sky. <laughs> SubhanAllah. This is Iman in the Unseen. These are the very things, by the way, today, people like Bill Maher and all these other like commentators, they make fun of. You people believe in a messenger? You people believe in a man that talks to God? Or God talks to him? How stupid can you be? You say, yes, we believe in a messenger. Completely. And we believe you're the one that's stupid. We do. And we'll find out soon who's laughing. Why not? Keep making fun of the messengers. Go ahead. We'll see who's laughing. When, when you raise and Allah, when you rise and Allah will say, Alisa hada bi haq. So is this real or not? Is this virtual to you? Is this mythology to you? Is this one of those Eastern religions that you studied in your or you taught in your university? How real does it feel now? The myth of Muhammad. How does it feel? And they're going to be standing there, Rabbana, all of a sudden, our master. And don't think they'll be talking in Arabic. They'll be saying it in their, you know, their pompous British accent too that day. <laughs> oh dear Lord, let us come back. <laughs> they're going to do it. <laughs> they're going to do it. You know. But this, this, this belief is one of the hardest. To accept a man and then to accept absolute authority. Not just to believe everything he says. That's hard enough. He's going to tell you how to get married. He's going to tell you how to live your life. He's going to tell you how to clean yourself. He's going to tell you what hand to eat with. What you can eat, what you can't eat. What time you should go to sleep, what time you should wake up. He'll call you out on everything. He has a right to. When you just sit there and listen. And you can't question anything he says. That's not easy. For human beings, we, we have a hard time doing that with our parents. A fraction of that. We have a hard time doing that with our parents. Your parents say, you're not going to that conference. But it's for Islam. And you're going to cry and scream. No, you're not going. You're doing homework. But I'm done with homework. Do some more homework then. You're not going. I don't want you to go to that place. You mean the masjid? Yeah, that place. I don't want you going there. We have a hard time listening to our parents. There's messengers. And they didn't ask for little things. They asked for huge sacrifices. Believing in him meant give, turning your whole life upside down. So this believer say, come on, you're nobody. You haven't been sent. Allah is enough as a witness between me and yourselves. I don't need any other you know, confirmation from anywhere else. Yes, there are people of the book who found me mentioned, who've confirmed me already. But even that is secondary. The real confirmation of me being a messenger doesn't come from any human being. It's Allah. Allah will be enough as a witness. Uh, and whoever truly has the knowledge of the book. Whoever has knowledge of the book will also serve as a witness. They will tr if they truly are sincere to the book, secondarily, they'll also come and testify, this can only be Allah's messenger. SubhanAllah. And they'll come to Iman without any hesitation whatsoever. So they kept asking in Surah Al-Rad, what, what can you show us? And I told you towards the end of Surah Al-Rahad, Allah says, I will show you one thing, haven't you noticed? The earth around you is shrinking. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا This surah takes that idea and takes it further. Surah Ibrahim is basically a continuation of that one thought. What is happening around the Arab land, how this da'wah is spreading, mm -hmm. and how it's taking hold. The messenger is reminded one more time, you have been given this book for one purpose, and that is, to, to deliver the message of Allah. Your job is to give the message, and I've made this message perfect for the language of these people. Bilisani qawmihim. You just keep on conveying no matter what their attitude is. Then Allah switches over and gives the messenger the examples of Musa salam and some other messengers. Basically highlighting that they were given the same mission as you were. You're given a book to deliver it to the people. They were given books to deliver it to people. So show patience like them when, it, when times are tough and be grateful like them when victory arrives. So patience and gratitude. Be, when time, be patient when times are tough, 
and be grateful when, once the victory comes. Now, then Allah goes, the argument from there continues, I've asked you to be hard at work just like Musa and his followers, Musa and other messengers, alayhi salam. But the kuffar are also hard at work just like they've always been across history. So, let me tell you, I've told you about your past. You will learn from the past of your predecessors, meaning Musa alayhi salam and some other messengers. The kuffar should learn not just from their past but from their future. Allah gives us a glimpse of what their leaders that they're following instead of accepting Muhammad Rasulullah as their leader, sallallahu alayhi wa the leaders that they are following will eventually all lead them to ruin in this world. Then they're going to end up in hellfire and then they'll meet the leader of their leaders, shaitan. And shaitan's going to say, hey, come on guys, don't yell at me. I'm not going to yell at you anymore. Let's just enjoy the barbecue. And they're going to have this like hopeless conversation in hellfire. That's the only thing lying ahead of them. Then once the hellfire is mentioned, of course, the Qur'an, Sunnah, when hellfire is mentioned, what's mentioned in contrast? Every time. So now the believers, you, you've been struggling al alongside this messenger, let me give you a glimpse of what you're going to be enjoying in Jannah. Then Allah goes, now the kuffar were taught a me message from the future. The future message was them and their leaders burning in hellfire. But then Allah takes them back to, so it's an interesting you know, sequencing of lessons. He takes them back and he says, here's what you should have learned. Ibrahim, you took the blessings that Allah gave you in this, in this land. You had all the reasons to be people of Allah, people of Tawheed. You turned all those blessings into a curse for yourselves. You took all those reasons, the house of Allah built for the worship of one God, the blessings that you enjoyed of Zamzam, all, this, all the other towns coming to you, acknowledging your superiority, your protection, and yet you turned this into a place, a center of shirk. Muslims don't fall into the same trap. You guys maintain your salat and establish zakat. It is as though Allah is saying over time to protect the religion, to protect the true deen, iqamatu salat and ita'u zakat are the pillars that hold it together beyond generations. Everything else in the religion will be fine if you can maintain these two things and give them their right. Then, it's interesting, towards the end of the surah, there's two passages at the end of the surah. One of them is here's what Ibrahim alayhi salam prayed for. Is that, a, is that a future lesson or a history lesson? It's a history lesson. Here's the dua he made when he came to Mecca. When the city was inaugurated. When he came to the city and it was formed, it was flourishing. Here's the dua he made. That dua was for you. What he asked you to be compared to what you've become, Quraysh. Look at the contrast in what your father want you to, wanted you to be and what you've become. You ever heard that kind of a scolding from people? Your father had so many expectations from you. What have you become? You know that, that kind of rhetoric? It's supposed to put you to shame. If nothing else, if nothing else, at least if one thing you take pride in is your history, your ancestry. That's the most loyal thing you have before you. Fine, Allah uses your ancestry and says, look, show some, show some respect to your father, Ibrahim. He made these du'as for you. Where do you stand? And even if that doesn't matter now, if that, that's the one thing in the worldly sense that they hold on to, that they have some respect for their loyalties. Even that doesn't work, even that's no good for them, then the only thing left for you is the worst of the hellfire. The last passage of Surah Ibrahim is just a description of what will happen to these people in hellfire. And how they are the worst enemies of the few that are trying to revive the legacy of Ibrahim salam. They've become the exact enemies of their own tradition, their own history. They're the traitors. So how are they going to be treated in the hellfire? That's the last passage, one of the more graphic passages in the Qur'an, which is at the same time addressed at them, and at the same time it's a consolation to the believers. Believers felt like they can get away with everything. There's no law and order. They control the cops. They control the authority. They do whatever crimes with us, and no, they don't have to pay anything. Allah says, don't you for a second think they got away. Let me tell you what's going to happen with them. And so that passage is given. So it, it kind of eases the the bad feelings of the Muslims who felt like these criminals are getting away with murder and they're getting away with all kinds of crimes. So that's the introduction I wanted to share with you guys inshallah ta'ala after we come back we will just go straight into the surah and hopefully today we can knock uh, surah, surah Ibrahim out also. Both these surahs I'm being rather brief because they're, they're fairly straightforward inshallah and I'm uh, avoiding the literary concepts because I'm holding them off for next year inshallah. Just keeping the coherence for now, just how the arguments are constructed and how the argument flows باذن الله تعالى بارك الله لي ولكم في القران الحكيم ونفعني واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم